and Cooney, your art trip. And today I'm going to show you how you can paint this adorable black curious kitty in this mysterious forest. This is officially the first day of Sherpa Ween, which is a 13 days of Halloween painting class. We're actually changing it up a bit this year so that it's not so intensive where we're meeting on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. That way you guys have a little bit of space between the paintings. Today's painting does have a traceable to make it easier and you can find that on the website. Um, you can also find the calendar and more information. The moderators are here to help you so if you need a link or more information about a technique or the many many kitty about black kitty classes that I have. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He, he may be <laughs> in and out barely because our equipment is being so fussy today. It's being like, it's got gremlins. I mean, just in the theme of things, it's got gremlins. It, there's one little one left. It's still roaming <laughs> that I can't get live. No, I, you just, you know, sometimes it just is what it is, right? So I'm working on an eight by eight today. I have the wish and intention on it for Kelly. Uh, that, that she has healing vibes, strength through her process, and remission in her future. And then also because of everything that's going on, safety for Florida and everyone really in the Gulf Coast through all of hurricane season, we have a lot of unexpected weather in front of us, and I just want all of us to be safe. So you know where it is on the palette. It's in the description below, but just so you know where I put, put it out. I have Mars Black, Thalo Green, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre. Sometimes this is called Yellow Oxide. The formula is different, but the color is the same. So either is okay. Ultramarine blue, cad red medium, cad yellow medium, titanium white. I mean, I think we know what it is, right? Hmm. Meow. Don't forget to take our fun poll, which will give you a gentle and great kind of curious cat reminder that you get a thumbs up the video. And if you have a question during the live show, put that question all in caps. If the moderators don't answer it, you might even see it answered by me on the show live. This will be available after the stream for replay for free. My streams are free, available after, and all the resources that match them are free. And they are going to be focused for a beginner, which means I'm going to be explaining everything in detail. Nice. You guys into it? Yes. I'm into it too. So I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to paint a background. I think um, I'm not going to get my big, big brush out. Maybe I'll get, nah, I'm gonna get my little bitty brush out. And I'm going to start with a ground. And my ground, interestingly, this time is going to be yellow ochre. Isn't that interesting? It is. So if you'll give me a step, we can start. There's a step. <gasps> a step, a step, a step for me, a step. It's All a right. Step one. I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. This particular one today is a three quarter inch Catalyst Princeton. Catalyst is a brush for acrylic paint, heavy bodied acrylic paint. Uh, the three quarter inch is the measurement. It's an angle brush, which is why it's like that. You could use a bright. Don't put your brush in your coffee like I was about to do. And let's just paint our whole surface yellow ochre. Sometimes we do this called an acrylic ground on acrylic paintings. It's just to sort of knock back and desaturate that bright white background so we can get that beautiful depth of color that we want. You'll notice I'm not putting this out neatly. It's because it doesn't need to be neat. Just needs to be yellow ochre. It used to be people use yellow ochre as their yellow. One of the oldest paint colors. Is that, did they stop using it as yellow? Ah, you know, a... now we have, oh, if you go into a paint store and you look at all the yellow you have, you have a lot of yellow to choose from. Yellow is not mellow anymore. <laughs> it's a cornucopia of yellow. It's a cornucopia. Oh, what a good fall term. Because we're fall, y'all. <laughs> this particular 13 days of Halloween is really actually more like a fairy tale. If you think of uh, uh, the director that did... Um, uh, Pan's Labyrinth and uh, Hellboy and some other ones where they're real kind of dark fairy tale. It's more dark fairy tale than scary dark this year. Hmm. And now I do have one hoot Halloweens. Like those are my easiest, easiest, easiest that I've done in previous years. I think we have like 120 Halloween paintings at this point from 13 days of Halloween. It adds up. It's some crazy number. So there are options. <laughs> any, many options. Going from never having painted before to having a little bit of painting experience, but still needing guidance. Now, before the next step, I'm going to dry Whoops. this. Before the next step. Hmm. Before the next step. Before the next step. Step, okay. step. I put it up too soon then. No, no, no. Well, no, it could be during the step. 
I just got to dry it before I'm I start up. again. Okay. Yeah. So I did. I, there's a step. Step two. We're on step two now. Step one was to paint the surface a yellowish color. Yellow ochre in this case. And I'll ask her. Uh, I'll ask her when we get back if you can, if you don't have yellow ochre, if you can use yellow and brown to kind of make a year brownish color. Which, hey, I can't see it being totally bad with the way that this is going to go out that way. But I'll ask her. You never know. I'm just the stunt hands that move the camera. Very fallible here. Hold on. Are we so, doing okay. good? Yeah. If, if, if you didn't have yellow ochre, could you just use brown and yellow to make a little brownish yellow? Yeah. In fact, I have a whole uh, series of videos on how to mix other colors. And one of them is how to mix all the browns. And uh, we do actually mix a yellow ochre in there. Um, and it, and it, you really can work it, uh, at, you know, with a little bit of the cad yellow and burnt sienna, and you can always knock it back with a little bit of ultramarine blue if you need to desaturate a bit. You can really mix colors. Also, sometimes it's just not. You could also do a brown background. Your painting wouldn't be ruined if you used a different color. It would just have a different kind of underglow. Ah. So. Sometimes when we're new in art, everything feels super mission critical, like heart surgery. Those decisions are very important, every one of them. But in art, we get a lot of flexibility. You could change a color and everybody is still okay. You know, I don't know if that's a good analogy. I have not taken any <laughs> medical classes. I'm going to just acknowledge that now. Any doctors who are like, what? <laughs> that's what it is. I don't know what I'm talking about medically, just art wise. You can affirm if heart surgery, you cannot be willy nilly changing things out last minute. Okay, <laughs> I suspect not. That would worry me about my heart surgeon. The next brush that I'm going to get, now this particular one is the number 18 D'Artigny brush by Raphael. It's a hog bristle brush. Listen, guys, this is a great brush, great brand, great company. Can be a little hard to find. You got to you go to Jerry's and or Dick Blick, uh, soon to be my Art Sherpa store. Um, if you cannot find it or it's not a great choice for your budget, do not forget the quality Simply Simmons brush, right? Which also comes in a hog bristle and is a little easier on the pocketbook. It won't hold up quite as long as uh, this brush, but you know, sometimes three, you can get them for like $3. So it can be, it can be a good choice in your life. And that's an okay thing. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create kind of our little ombre background. Ombre. And what's going to be great is we're going to be doing a lot of these little brushy, brushy strokes. So I'm going to get a bit of my orange, as you do, my cad red, and a little bit of cad yellow. And you can kind of see I'm making, um, still, it's a deep red orange, but it's an orange. And I might get a smidge of my burnt sienna into that. And that's just to keep it from being just too bright. And I'm going to come from the bottom, and I'm going to scruffily up. See how I'm scruffling it up? A little bit of a background here. Now the fun thing about doing digital design, right? Which I was in a very long off period where I didn't have access to my paint, so I had to do a lot of my designing digitally, is it's always interesting to see how do I create that same effect in paint. And the reason I know how to do this is I had an insane art instructor once named Bonnie Newman, I think. And she would make us collage things with all kinds of different materials and then paint those things. So be like, how would you paint that if you had to paint that? And I would be like, I have no idea. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to get some white oh. into this. And I'm going to come back in. Focus. No, no, no. And I'm going to, while the paint is still wet, can you see how I'm softly putting that in? That can be kind of weird to do it first. How does this work? It works when both paints are really wet. Right. If if the acrylic is dry, it's dry. It doesn't reactivate like oils. But we're going to do a couple layers here, so you're going to get it. But notice how I'm not pressing the brush down into it. I'm going over the top, and that really lets me kind of get a little bit of a soft effect. Look how soft that is. A lot of people don't realize you can just get this in acrylics. They'll make you pay. They'll like make you pay a lot of money for a very expensive course to blend it like oils, and it's like. They do do that. You just have to be ready to hustle along. Hmm. You don't got to spend a lot of money to learn how to do it. You don't. Now you've also got a couple of really good videos uh, on um, how to paint your pets. 
I have so many videos on pets. And yeah, we did a whole year of dogs. We were like, we're going to paint all the dogs. So if you're interested in, well, like, I would say, so if you start out with like. So, so let's keep going though, because yeah, I got to go while the paint you is keep, dry. Sorry. And then our moderators can share all the pet videos with you guys in the chat so below. Pet videos. Now, I'm going to take out a little bit of my phthalo green, which is clearly too bright, isn't it? Yes. And I'm going to mix no, it in maybe. to my burnt sienna. Is it too bright? More brown. I'm going to get it back over here to where my yellow, white, and cad red were and i'm gonna start blending in this color maybe a little more white even look at that is there a wrong answer can it be too bright the phthalo green yeah yeah it could be i'm gonna come over and that's what i'm playing with and get my yellow ochre here we're gonna try to get this little transition this transition can be a little bit hard let's get a little water on our brush i've got to go back into my yellow guess what i can't I haven't taken all the green out of my brush. What I'm trying to create is just a little blend. The kitty part of this, where we put the kitty in, that's the easy part, guys. The kitty. The kitty is the easy, easy part. It's this hard water, wet, wet blend. Yeah, that's where we're working. We got to work it. So I'll be quiet. Huh? I'll, I'll only lightly mock. <laughs> well, what it is, is I'm, what you're seeing me do here is I've got my phthalo green. Let's do it again. If you're not familiar, so you don't feel overwhelmed by it. I'm mixing a little bit of burnt sienna into my phthalo green. Notice how I'm doing it in small amounts. I'm not taking big amounts of paint or mixing them together in a big way. If I mix them together in a big way, what might happen, let's get a little yellow into there, is that it would become too much paint for me to manage. I don't know if you've ever had that experience where you had too much paint to manage. Sometimes I wipe off on a paper towel and I get a little bit of water dust into my brush. And I'm just making sure that this is kind of scuffly. If you've ever had to blend any makeup on a face, you're fairly familiar with this process. Ah. Maybe a little burnt umber into there. Look at that. So we can just definitely continue to soften this background and create this moody, moody, foggy, foggy little forest. That's mm. this whole thing. We're going to be learning all about moods and fogs. And and like, don't be overly hard on yourself about your background. It mm -mm. will it will look cool in behind the trees. It's going to look cool yeah. no matter it's, what you do, guys. You're going to be okay. Here's it, what you've got to do. You've got to learn like an artist. Mm. you got to take the leap. Got to do it. I'm going to take a little bit of my cad yellow. Oh, I could even get my yellow ochre here. See how all these paints work together? They're friends. Friends! <laughs> and I'm just going to keep deepening that up and softly blending that and creating those little moody moods. A little bit wider in there. That's a nice soft moody mood, isn't it? Now, this doesn't mean that I won't be playing with these moods around my trees. I will be. But I have to put the base mood in. You got to get the basic moods in, friends. Yes. I'm rinsing out my brush every once in a while when you're doing this kind of background. You will need to rinse out and reset. We're doing good. I want you to breathe in, breathe out, and be calm. I'm going to take another bit of my yellow over to that Cad Ren mix and get a little bit of the white into it look at me go back there and it's just about finding that right tuned in bit right i want to make sure that i get some little misty mist going here misty mist if i have to lighten up the pressure on my brush i do i don't i don't like not trust myself you don't have to worry about it. You're doing better than you think. A little cad yellow and cad red again. Right into that wet area. Look, and we add just a little bit of an orange glow. See how when it's wet into wet, it really just does kind of want to glow. And you can even take a little bit of that orange up here, up on the right-hand side. You guys are doing good. If you're like, wow, this is just, what is all this? That's okay. It's, it's about to blend. You're learning something really important here. You don't have to be perfect at it day one. So when you learn like an artist, you've got to listen to yourself. 
you take that leap you have empathy for where you're at if you're brand new don't be mad if a technique takes a minute to learn you have to accept what today is right where you are today that's okay you got to be present don't live in past paintings or future paintings just be right now in this painting here now i'm going to continue to move forward i'm going to get my black into my brush might get a little green into it and a little ultramarine blue just kind of toning it out of just plain Mars black right and I'm gonna come in these corners and I'm gonna start a very dark notice how I'm doing that it's very dark on the outer edge I want it to be quite dark it's gonna take a little bit of layering to make this work if your blacks a little transparent that's actually not a bad thing. It lets you have a little bit of forgiveness as you're learning how to get it in. I'm going to add a little bit of my white to this. I can get green into that, blue into that, right? Just kind of cooling it and start to bring down this misty gray from the corners. Lining it up. It's going to come around. It's like kind of like, do you remember like those halo pictures? Yeah, I do. Right. You've got a little bit of halo and you've got a little bit of forgiveness here. So don't get too hard on yourself. I can always get into this green right here and mix it in halfway. Now softly on the toe of the brush where I want a soft fused little edge. Guess and get that green in there. Lightly blend it down. Little black at the corners. It's going to take a little bit of black and a little bit of blend to get it all the way because what we're going to want to do is prevent these little lines. That's the layers. You guys are doing good. I want you to rinse out your brush and let's dry this. Now, if you have hard layers, we're going to be able to fix it in the next step. In fact, what's kind of cool about this is that we will be fixing it in the next step. I'm going to dry with a hair dryer. Sip okay. my coffee. You guys do what you got to do. Remember, take care of your body. All right. <laughs> so, good to see everybody here. Thank you, guys. Sorry, I was a little chatty earlier. Just... Sometimes I don't know when I can talk and when I can't talk because she's got fast blending to do. You know, got to blend and not let it dry. And then sometimes, you know. So anyway, nice seeing everybody out there. Thank you. This is a nice group of people here today. I see all you folks out hanging out. It's nice seeing everybody. Appreciated all the, the love and support. Oh, there she's back. I'm back. You guys are doing really, really good. All right, we want to get one more blend kind of going. We do want it sort of soft through here. So Same step or next step? We're Next step. Okay. We already did step. Step is the dry. There's the step. Okay. All right. Uh, can you do watercolor? Uh, can you do this on watercolor paper? Thanks. Yes, you can. In fact, you could get some very soft blends and effects. I've done some watercolor paper with a like acrylic, and it's a really fun process. Uh, 140 pound, and I think a watercolor block is best. Now I'm going to take my phthalo green and burnt sienna. You can see I'm kind of mixing them here together. And I'm going to come over to my gray. I do want this to be more of a brown mix. See, it's got almost that green cast, doesn't it? Yeah. Bringing it back, getting that depth going. I'm wiping off on a paper towel, guys. And when it's wiped off, I'm going to come on the edge and just sort of feather blend that out. Isn't that neat how you can do that? Creating a little bit of a layer. I can go ahead and get a little bit of my brown, I mean my black, into that gray mix with the green. And look, that darkens the colors. Now I can get that moody mix coming down. 
softly on the tip of my brush. You could do this with any brush. The trick is more turning your brush, having light pressure, right? Light, light pressure in your mind too, by the way. We're just making sure these corners are dark. Let's go. Now this one up here is quite dark, so maybe I get really into the black there. And then just barely, it's all still wet, so I can still blend. Little green and the burnt sienna. Kind of making that nice little edge. And then guess what? You can get a little white into it. Now I know I've got a little moon that's going to be happening here, right? I got to think about that. The other circles, you know, I can kind of think about and work around, but I do need to think about where they are. Here's another weird trick. I'm going to come over here to my yellow and red, my, my really cool orange. I mix my background color in there. Look how on this far side that helps me get that little red look that needs to be over here. A little more red. You can wipe off if you need to. But by having these colors kind of related to each other, that creates a bit of a visual blend too. And that's something that you're going to want to do. I'm going to rinse out my brush. You rinse out your brush. Whenever we rinse out our brushes, one of the nice things that we can do, right, is dry them off with a towel. Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow into that weird color I made earlier. Isn't that fun? I'll bring it over to my green. That green brown mix. Add a little bit of white to it. Very lightly here. Where I know I'm going to have that little moon later. Can always get into my gray. Make sure that that's fairly blended. I really like this process. Yeah, it's kind of calming. How many paintings would you need to do to be good at this process? Well, everybody's slightly different, but I just want you to know everybody also has a number. There's, there's a destination for everybody. You can get here. Right? Sometimes it's 10 paintings. You get enough techniques in 10 paintings. Maybe you need to take the beginner acrylic painting course. Right? That's a fun one. Who doesn't love that? I'm going to take a little bit of my cad red and a little bit of my burnt umber. And kind of missed it down here in that fun. Up a bit. Get a little bit of my yellow in there. Kind of takes it to an orange, doesn't it? And this is, we're getting some mists, aren't we? Yeah, and letting the nice. colors be a little transparent. And that's okay. A little more yellow in it coming down here. Coming up. Just doing really good. All right. That is the background. If it takes you three layers to get there, that's okay. Just remember, if you're getting the lines and you're not loving it, that's your paint drying too quickly on you. And what you can do is you can dry it and then start it again on another layer. As they layer up, they're going to glaze between each other. The thing is is be easy with yourself, right? Not everything has to be perfect in every minute. We're about to put a bunch of trees here. So that's going to change everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. When we come back, let's do some trees. And we don't even have to dry it. Is this a step? This is a step. All right. I'm going to get my, step. my craft coffee. 
we can't run the microwave and have a stream because the microwave takes out the stream. Yeah. No, uh, no, no. I'm, I'm hardwired now. Mm. I can. Oh, excellent. It just takes everybody else on the wireless right. out. Now, I'm going to get a round brush. You need something about in this size. You could use a synthetic or you could use a hog. I'm going to use the hog. This is the number four D'Artigny. But this is a number four Simply Simmons. And either of these brushes would really work. I want to come here and I want to make some distant, distant little trees, right? So my trick is going to be that I'm going to get a little bit of my black and white together. That makes kind of a gray, doesn't it? I'm add a little brown to it. And let's come here from the bottom. I need about this much space for cat. So I'm going to put in some distant little tree branches. Notice I'm kind of wiggling back and forth. You guys have it. You can do it. I'm on the toe of the brush. What that means is I'm not pressing down very hard. And the reason that I'm kind of scraping back and forth is it gives it this soft effect. Sort of out of focus effect. Bring a little branch out here to the right. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, when I want to go into the background, one of the things I can do is I can get into my green and white. Look at this. This is going to be really cool. See how that grays the tree? That's going to make it look, and I can even get some orange into it. Like, I'm trying to blend it in. I'm having it be part of the background color. So, it's not only lighter, it has some of the hue in it that you're seeing in the painting. I might come forward and get a little yellow in there. Look at that, how that works. Nice. Sometimes when we're painting trees, we sort of paint them in one color, right? We think of them in a very kind of limited way. I'm going to add a little bit of gray back into that. Now, are you using a number 18 and a number 8 silver Cambridge Bright? I'm using not, I don't have either Cambridge oh. Bright here. Okay. Um, so Cambridge is, is a fantastic brush and you can get it. I highly recommend it. They don't make them anymore. And um, they were just one of the best. Ah. Uh, and... They would have different sizes than this. The, the, this bright right here, this is a number 18 to Artony. Yeah. But in Cambridge, it would probably be an eight, if I remember correctly. But I might not be. Everybody numbers their stuff differently. Right. That would be like me just trying to remember from like the, like, just like what's in my brain. <laughs> I'm adding a little bit of my green white up here. And I'm going to create some sort of distant little, see how these are little light branches in the, and I don't, press I, I let them be kind of dry brushy see how that is it's okay to let it be dry brushy see how a lot of that canvas is showing through that's what I'm trying to do there take that over to the left I let a lot of that show through you know over here Getting a little bit of that gray-brown gray in there, and I'm just going to bring little branches out. They wander everywhere. These are more brambles than anything. Notice that I'm just on the toe of this. That's how I'm getting any kind of a line. If your brush is completely exploded where it looks like a poof, switch to a synthetic round. Right? I can do this. It's not a perfectly pointed brush, but I can do this because the brush does hold its shape a little bit. I got some green and brown back in it. I'm going to go ahead and add a little orange into that, right? Kind of come here and maybe make a... See, that feels like distant...
And I can come back with a little black coming up there. Creates just some little laundry. And then uh, maybe some black black comes through here. Remember, these are brambles. So it's okay for them to feel brambly. Brambly, brambly. brambly. I'm going to get a little bit of my burnt sienna and my phthalo green and my Mars black up here. Because they're brambly, brambly. By mixing what's in this background color, I can really uh, do a lot to create that feeling of things being distant. If I get into that orange and I come up over this orange area, doesn't that help to push it back? Yeah. Push it back means that visually I just added, I'm adding a darker black to some of the tree. Okay, just to give it a little shadow. Just very lightly here. Make it a nice little orangey brown. Coming back over this just to make it seem more distant. Get a little white in it. These are these are far off. Far off, far away. Far away. In far the distance. Away. In the distance. I want some little branches here. I want to I want to have them be there. Definitely want some coming over this way. Now, let's call this a step. When we come back, we're going to put in some glowy dots and maybe some more forward trees. Oh, Amy Ovart says, hello, beautiful artists. And C. Blanton says, I'm doing this with watercolors. Cannot wait to see it. C. Blanton in the Artsurp official Facebook group or anywhere you want to share it. You can share with me on Twitter. If you really, really want me to see it, you can share with me on Twitter. Here's the problem with that. You got to go on Twitter, which is an upsetting place right now on its best day. Hmm. It's just... Just terrible. <laughs> it just is. But I don't have a lot of Twitter followers over there, mostly because I don't try to say things that make people fight. Ah. You really got to want to say things that make people fight to do well on Twitter. <laughs> All right. I rinsed my brush out and I've wiped out the extra water. Let's get at least a little bit of this forward tree. I'm going to take my brown. And we're going to say right here. Coming off towards the upper left. The reason I don't make straight lines is trees kind of are messy little creatures and they grow weird and I want them to feel rough. And the reason you see me kind of going back and making little rough strokes is I'm trying to avoid making a smooth stroke. Sometimes if you understand why I'm doing a thing, it's easier for you guys to duplicate that thing. Because when you know the reason why, you're like, oh yeah, and, and then if you'd ever had like some idea in your mind of art should be done a certain way or not, you can kind of start to let that go. Because you guys are smart. Smart, smart, smart. Other than don't eat paint and don't set fire to paint, there really aren't a lot of rules in art. There's a few guidelines. There's some treasured information, some wisdom, some mastery. But art doesn't really have rules. And, you know, I mean, we did a video tutorial of it, if you ever want to make your own, of a banana taped to a wall. We did a tutorial, came with a traceable. You could totally learn how to tape a banana to a wall but if you remember you know a couple years ago that sold for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars two hundred eighty thousand dollars at art basil when when that is and that's i'm not saying that's not valid art that's valid art all i'm saying is is that if that's valid art so is yours so is yours i'm gonna add a little more black to this tree just being really i like i like the way that looks going over to the side and uh, let's give this a uh, nice little dark branch coming over Every time I branch, I branch differently. It's just, 
My trees never grow the same way. They are, they are strange creatures. I'm very lightly kind of putting a little branch up here. Just because I like to. Let's uh let's come here. And grow something up, shall we? Now, this branch has to be thinner than the trunk it's attached to. They or look, look weird. It's not that there's no trees that don't do some weird version of this. Um Oh, I see uh, Beth Mulligan is saying, good point. And then Moderator Rainbow is sharing the step-by-step -step books. So we do try to write written instructions that match the videos. Um, we have several hundred of them. They are free to download. I think I made, I don't know, what is it, 200 books? They're free to download. There's a bunch of them. Um, not that I'm never going to publish them and bind them together, and you could buy them from me if you wanted to, but they'll, they remain free. Um these will be out a little bit later just because there's so many of them and it takes us a minute to get them put together. But these will all have written uh, books out as well. So if you're like, man, I, if, if only this was in written instruction, I would have it. It's going to be in written instruction. I'm getting a little more black as I go up just so that we can really sort of see that tree branch. I'm really enjoying this, by the way, guys. It's super enjoyable to me to do this. How are you liking your little trees? You feeling good about them? Sometimes I lift up my canvas just to see where everything is headed. Because you don't always know, do you? No. My pressure on all these is light because I want some of the canvas to show through. That's how we're going to get a distant little look going. Sometimes I check the chat, see who's there. I, I see like Heather Jacobs and Mary's here and Lindsay Herbert. Hi, Lindsay Herbert. How so are you many Sherpettes and Sherpazoids and Sherpeople. You just be you just be a member of the art family any way you want to. Yeah, we do. We have Sherpettes and some people are like, no, I'm a Sherpazoid, which is also okay. Some people are just like, I'm just art fam. That's also okay. We don't really get upset about that stuff here. You be you. I can handle it. <laughs> I promise you. I can handle you being you. The only time I really start to go kind of like I really struggle is when people get a little bit hateful. Then I get a little bit upset. Because I just don't think there's any need. I think uh, one should never kick down. No, no, not at all. Punch no. up. Don't kick down. Don't kick down. Don't kick at all if you can avoid it. And if you get stuck in it, you know, try to get yourself out as soon as you can. Sometimes I get stuck on it. That's, that's my avoidance of Twitter. Because if something's going to upset me so deeply, I have to say something, it's going to be somebody on Twitter. I think that's like a whole business. I think people just sit at home and go, what could I say that would offend the most people possibly everywhere? I am a Twitter genius. That's what they say. You never know. I'm just light pressure, guys. Notice that these branches are just dancing from each other. Now, in these steps, when we release them, you'll be able to see each layer build up. And if you're having any trouble understanding where that is, you're going to really be able to get it. Right? This is, this is the process by which we paint that crazy, awesome autumn forest or that very involved little puppers. I think we're doing really good here. Now, guess what we get to do? Take a little bit of your blue, just put it right into your brush. Yeah. See what I'm doing? Yep. Ultramarine blue, and then add a little bit of white to it. Maybe a little more blue. You want it to be distinctive blue-gray. And I'm going to make little bitty marks on my tree. Brush is dry. I don't have a lot of water on this brush. Just little bitty marks. See, they're just like little short marks. I 
sort of implies the light in this in this space. Don't kick, eat ice cream. I don't know what that means, Mary Myers. <laughs> so I need to know more. Don't kick, eat ice cream. Oh, okay. I won't kick the ice cream. I Just like in the general, ice cream. I think I ice, like cream ice cream is, is better than kicking, so I'll take that. Oh, and Nakisha Martin says, this is gorgeous already. You're gorgeous already. Are we doing okay, guys? Are we overwhelmed? Are we holding on? All right. Let's just keep it together. Okay. We got this, guys. We can do this. So this gray color is on the inside of that branch and then a little bit here. I might put a little here. And you can put just a smidge on this one here. Not a big thing. All right. It's just fun stuff. Yeah. All right. I feel pretty good about that. Let's call this a step. We did brilliant. Uh, Amy Obert, people are out trolling on purpose. My very first post on Twitter, some random person went out of their way to make sure they told me they were offended. <laughs> I mean, that's the opening statement on Twitter. I'm going to let you know right now. If you said puppies and rainbows and kitties are the best, you will offend somebody to death. Mm. And they will have to tell you. And also, they're going to be disappointed in you, which I think is shocking. I'm so disappointed in you, random stranger that I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's amazing. And then people will say stuff that to me seems pretty reasonable. I don't know who they're speaking to. I don't right. assume it's me. But they'll say something. And then the comments are just like, how did that? What? How did you take that to heart so how, deeply, right. complete stranger who <laughs> don't know each other? And then once I got in a Twitter fight, and I don't know what conversation we were having, but we weren't talking, like we thought we were talking to each other, but I, I was like, you shouldn't put people down for how they dress. That's ridiculous. And they were saying something completely different, but I didn't know some young person lingo. So eventually I think they realized they're like, oh, this is somebody too old to know my words. Don't. <laughs> they're like, you're right. You shouldn't make fun of how people dress. I wasn't, but I, I acknowledge your point. So I was like, let people be who they want to be. But you do. Mm -hmm. we're, 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 we we're stepping. Stepping. Mm -hmm. I think we're, we're, we're done stepped. We've already stepped? All That's right. That's a step up. So let's do... I think I, I'm ready for the cat. So I'm going to take my same brush. We're still on the number four. De Artney brush. And I'm going to come up to almost the halfway point, just a little below it, I think, on my canvas. And I'm going to make a little line. Curved. It's about a half inch. And then I'm going to come down. Now, you guys can do this in chalk. I'm going to do this in paint and explain how I drew it. <laughs> do yours in chalk. I like to use this chalk. And the reason I suggest chalk is because you can change your mind. Paint, you can't change your mind. But if you want to paint it along with me, this will work. I used to do this in painting party when I do it. So we're going to say that the top of the head is about an inch. Right? I'm going to come down about another inch this way. And I'm going to join those lines. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm getting a sense of scale and gesture. I can very easily, using fur, make Kitty bigger. It is hard in paint to make kitty smaller. So that's why I'm being cautious. <laughs> I'm going to come up and try to evenly at least the width of the face. Kind of create two nice little triangles. Notice that also the paint is kind of light. Um, if my under canvas is dry, and I'm not putting on my paint too thick or heavy, I can really easily remove it. And so this glazing lets me really sketch this out. So I've added my two little triangles. That's pretty good. Now, coming here, we need to go in, and we're going to have an out and down on the chest, right? And that's going to come down like that. 
this is definitely going to be out a little bit more. Little bump over. See how it's a little bump over? And then we're going to come off towards the left a little bit. Now, right now, what I have is a Siamese kitty or a hairless cat. It's very skinny. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. We can, we can do that. I'm going to start to fill in these lines just so that I get a sense of where my scale is at and then I can build it out. In things, and I'm going to kind of fluff this out a little bit, when you're trying to decide how big something is, Break it down into small shapes. Is this a rectangle? Is this a circle? Is this a square? But if you want to use the traceable, guess what? That's okay. That's an art technique. They teach it in art school. It's not cheating. <laughs> cheating is uh, going and reproducing a Van Gogh painting and trying to use all the same materials and then taking it down and trying to sell it for uh, a bunch of money. That would be cheating in art. <laughs> they don't like that. I consider that a crime. Yes, that's not good. I'm going to come here and you'll notice that I'm taking the brush and I'm just kind of flicking out a little bit. That's how we're going to get a little fur effect. Look at us going. That's how we're getting a little fur effect. And then we can be like, oh, hey, let's put some up here. Also a little fur effect. The fur effect is the effect that you want. I just rinsed my brush, wiped it off on the paper towel. I did that just so, because as you're painting, you know, your paint will dry on your brush. Flicking it out. This is going to be a very fluffy cat. If I have too much water and the hair isn't kind of flicking out easily, then I can wipe the brush off and get a little less water into it. If you're having trouble with fur, if it's just making you miserable, may I suggest my favorite fur brush, which is the 3 8 Printon's Filbert Grain Grainer in their Filbert Touchline. Now, they have one in the select, but this is the best one I have used. I love it. I'll show it just for two seconds. Um, you can get them at Michael's and online. Let me just show this to you. So if you're like, this is making me miserable, this fur is so easy to do. See how that just makes the easiest fur? The brush has little uh, cutouts on it. So if you're miserable in fur, get one of these. I'm just showing you with a regular brush right now. We'll get into the grainers. Like I, I, I would recommend having a grainer by the owl. Just because it makes the feathers just a joy. Now I'm kind of just shaping those ears in, right? We love those little ears. The ears being up and in this position is what makes this cat so curious. That's why he's so curious. Now, if you need to put anything back in, believe it or not, you can rinse out your brush and go back into the background color just to show you, right? And you can change it any way you need to. So do not feel panicked or trapped, all right? You're okay. I'm going to hold my uh, picture up just so that I can see it. Because sometimes when you have the artwork straight down, it's a little hard to see. And I need to get my, my artwork like back up.
making sure that my shapes are good. All right, I think that's enough kitty and we can let that kitty dry for a second, but we know where the kitty is. See, we know where the kitty is. We know where the kitty is and we know how to fix the kitty. The kitty gets weird on us. So that's what we need to do. When we come back, we're gonna do some dots. <gasps> Deborah Evans, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. And um, there's a, we have Heathers. We have Heathers in our group. Our Heathers are nice. Our Heathers are like super nice. The Heathers, our Heathers are like helpful. <laughs> I don't know. It's just how we're, and we have Veronica's too. Also helpful, not murderous. <laughs> yeah, all of them are nice. Even our Regina Georges are nice. Okay. I was a too many teen movies, right? Too many teen movie references. Okay. I, did we step already? All right. We're going to come in and we're going to start making a little bit of these sort of background moon colors. I'm going to take my cad yellow smidge of my cad red a little of my yellow ochre i'm gonna come right over could you use my pouncers here of course you could yes you absolutely could use my pouncers here but they're hard to get now I don't know, like there were a couple brush sets left on the Home Shopping Network, like three of the Galaxy and four of the Explorer set. I don't know if they're still there because I shared it out. And I think that will be it. Yeah. It might be the end of it. Until the next one. Until the next one. I'm going to add another little dot right here. It's small, about the size of a pea. A little bigger right here between these branches. You don't have to have them exactly where I put them. If your branches went a bunch of different ways, just stick between branches. I'm not going to send home the reference, like painting to your family and tell them anything. So you can be like, no, it's exactly like this. I painted it exactly. And I'm going to, if, if they come and ask me, I'm going to be like, yes, it's exactly the same. I got your back. Yep. I do. <laughs> I've actually done that before. <laughs> I, I joke about that all the time, but I actually did that for somebody before. They had a, a sister-in-law that would not believe them. And um, she came and she's like, is this, I, I was just like, wow, that's a rough sister-in-law. As, as a person with a rough sister-in-law, I get it. I was like, that's a rough sister-in-law is like checking your recreational homework. Wow. I'm adding little dots. Yeah, right? Oh, I'm just like, I, I was like, I don't mean to be judgmental, but I feel like maybe therapy. For them is a good idea. Something. <laughs> Something. I'm just going back through and just making sure I can see my little dots in those colors. And then there's maybe just a just such a hidden little one here. Right? And let's do a pretty good one right here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of touch that. That's good. Now I'm gonna get a little of my white. Maybe some yellow into that. And dry brush right over it. Now, the dry brushing works if the paint underneath is dry. If your paint's taking longer than mine to dry, that's okay. Remember, you can pause me on the live or replay. And the chat will keep going. And it goes just like you're the best. <laughs> I think Anne, Anne has met me and hung out with me. I think Anne knows I will do that. <laughs> I'm just kind of lightening it up in here, right? But it's kind of leaving that. This is sort of in a primitive style of artwork, right? Is that an insult to this artwork? No, it's not. It's actually a really cool uh, movement of art and I love it. Uh, probably the most famous of artists that you know is Grandma Modis, Moses that did in that. Ah. And so this has a bit of that feel. And what it means is, is I'm just not using maybe easily identifiable traditional art techniques and I'm putting things together in a very raw, emotional, emotive way, which I'm into. 
Oh, I just saw just such a nice comment. I love if you are here on the replay, go back and read the live chat because people are so nice here. Mm hmm. You know, and not in that way. We were talking, John and I were talking about that. I'm, I'm lightening this up. Have you guys ever heard of this concept of toxic positivity? Right? Because being positive is very important. We try to keep a very positive vibe here. We don't try to burden you with stuff because life is, life is challenging. But sometimes, sometimes positivity kind of turns a corner and becomes a problem. You guys ever seen that? <laughs> like stops being like a good thing and starts being like a, a hindrance to life. So here's the thing. I'm always going to be positive with you guys, but not to the point where I'm going to ask you to deny your reality. And what I love is that this group is very grounded and present mm -hmm. and they're going to be there for you in your stuff and, you know, not gaslight you about your stuff. <laughs> But they're going to try to help you feel strong in it. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. I love that. And so go back and read the chat. Because what you'll find is a very positive chat. Not a release reality kind of chat. <laughs> We're still, we still exist in reality. We'll be like, oh, it's a crazy week on the world. Or I'll acknowledge Twitter is not my favorite. I'm adding a little white highlight to this. You see that in a dry brush? Letting a lot of that come through and show underneath. Isn't that wonderful? This is just barely touching it right here, maybe a bit. And I'll leave that a little bit light there. Oh, I like this. Okay, we're doing really good, guys. And then I saw uh, Sandra Williams like, this is a wonderful channel. And then David E. says, wish me luck having my first art show tomorrow. All thanks to the Sherpa. Oh, uh, all thanks to Sherpa and John's lesson and John lessons. Okay, first of all, good luck. Have a wonderful show. If it's your first art show, make sure if, you, if the gallery lets you do it to get a little email list going. If they let you do it. So that you can let collectors know what's happening in your world. Because you'll get fans, right? And it's important. And it's, it's okay to like feel pretty chuffed and pretty proud of your stuff. That's all right. People don't mind. It's okay to stand next to your artwork. Please just punch and proud of yourself. That's all right. It's an appropriate place for that. You worked hard. Good luck. I'm having a wonderful time. And I hope you are all red dots. Yes. Oh, family, family. Thank you, family, family. You are my family, family. New step. Guess what? We're going to need What's to that? use a different brush. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's a different brush. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to use something called a number one liner by Princeton. That's just a detail brush because, as you might have guessed, we're going to do some details. I'm going to get my blue, white, and black gray loaded on my brush again. And I'm going to come here. And I'm going to very carefully... Try to place my eyes. I'm going to start it by making these two like little upside down marks. You guys see those right there? I'll do that. Let's bring those down. And remember, we can always trim in. What you want to have is a little bit of space between the eyes, okay? And you need a little bit of space between the top of the head and the eyes. And come down a little bit from the eyes downward, right? Because the kitty's got to have a nose. And that. So that's what we're doing. That's how we're going to place them. And I'm using gray because it's easy to come back with my black in the interior of my eye. There we go. That's pretty nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Making a little downward V, like a little bird. Remember how we used to paint birds? That's all we got to do. That's all we got to do there. And then I'm going to get a little of my yellow and red together. And I'm going to make a little orange, bright orange, deep orange initially at first, okay? I'm going to come inside here.
and fill in with the deep orange. Just the cad red and the cad yellow. And then I'm gonna come actually, believe it or not, and I'm gonna come right over that gray with this. I'll be back with some yellow. I just wanna have this as a base. Once I have that, I can come back and trim up the black. Is there a way to adjust the focus on the painting or is this because it is streaming? Ask Jamie Sass ATM. So on YouTube, just general, like this will apply to anything. Um, we stream at the highest resolution it allows us, but you may have a setting on your side that reduces the resolution or the quality of the stream, causing it to be lower resolution. There's a little gear on your videos. That's generally where you um, can adjust that. If you guys from different, like if you're on Android or mobile or like, let us know what you're on. Somebody here is on it and they can tell you how to make that adjustment. Now, after the stream for a little bit, while well, YouTube is like, I don't know, processing it, it is a little bit low resolution, but then it'll be up to, what is it, 1080 is what we do. So it yeah. will come back up. Now I'm going to come around here and I'm going to make sure that I do a nice, tidy little black around these eyes. Notice how that kind of cleans up my blue-gray. And I can make it quite thin this way. And I can even trim down anything on that little nose. Uh, uh, Cinnamon, can, could you add a little bit of details like a star, different type of star into the sky? Asked Lollipop Strawberry. I might be able to do that. Here, I'll do that while we're working on the face, okay? Let's, um... Actually, let's do it. Here's when we're gonna do it, Love Pop Strawberry. After I sign it, I'll go back and add that. That way the step-by-step -step is the image that everybody said, but I'll show you like quick as a bonus after how to do a different star. Or, or, or what if we made a short video after like where I really did some stars on here and I added some stuff. Let me know what you wanna do, John. Think on it. Yes. Well, either way, Lollipop, you're gonna get some star help. All right, I'm gonna add a little more yellow to my orange because we could make a short video like a, uh, like a one minute one where it's just a star and show you how to add more stars to the sky. And I would be okay with that. Maybe a little more orange than this here. See, I am brightening up that eye. I'm gonna come here and get the yellow. A little more yellow on the inside. And a little more yellow on the outside. While this is having a dry, I'm going to go ahead and take my number four again, uh, Raphael. Right? I'm going to take my number four, Raphael. Okay, and I'm going to load it with some black, and I'm going to do another little layer of black so that my black kitty is very black. And because I was real careful with my detail brush and went around the eyes, I'm not going to, like, boo-boo them. I don't have to get that close, right? Because I already did that. Now we're just at the next layer. I generally like when things need to be very dark and very black to do two to three layers. When you want it to be very dark or very black. That just makes sure it gets nice, good coating on there. Yeah, so that, that, you know, he feels as black as he is. This curious kitten.
I'm just adding a little bit of fun fur. I'm going to rinse that out. Uh, somebody said, I love the idea of a bonus after show, says Jen Butterfly. So for sure, we got a bonus on the after show. All right, let's take our black again and our number one monogram liner. And we're going to come inside the eye and from the top. So care. You know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to trust my eyes. I'm going to get my vision enhancers. And I'm going to add little downward. I don't know. They're like candy corns in shape. Cat's eyes. Coming up over the top there, right? That's looking pretty good. Now, I'm going to get a little bit of yellow and some white. Come on the inside there. A little bit on the nose and just beep, just a little bit there. It's just such a little bit. I'm going to rinse out and get back into my orange. You guys remember the orange? Kind of blend that in like you do. Now, I feel like there's just a hint of a little bit of green. So I'm going to take that green into that orange. Adding a little bit more yellow to it. That's looking pretty good. Let's get our gray, our blue gray with a little more white on it. And a little bit to the outer corner. And to do the next part, we really, really probably need to have the eye be dry. Uh, otherwise, it won't go over the black correctly. So let's make sure. I'm just touching things up. Yes. That we dry and then we come back and do some finishing steps. So we're going to put a little step up. Uh, Emily Floor, what's your thought on glass palettes? My stay wet. I, I like my stay wet, but I want something other than palette paper for when I don't want to go through the trouble of cleaning and prepping the stay wet. Um, a new wave makes a glass palette that's tempered uh, and has safety. So even if it does crack, which is very unlikely, we did a video where we were trying to demonstrate how you don't want to use glass from a frame mm -hmm. and you do want to use this type of glass. And we couldn't even break it with the wrench and then we just gave up. We we're like, <laughs> it's one. Um, they're very good and they're resilient. Um, as long as you're cleaning up pretty immediately after, I would get the tub of towels from Jerry's yeah. And use that like after I like cleaned up and you know to like hit it because that, that'll lift it up or rubbing alcohol works really well rubbing alcohol tiles and then you can keep it going forever and ever and ever. Mm. It's very good. Very, very good. And the stay wet palette people, um, I think work with the new wave people and their glass palettes fit in the stay wet boxes. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. So there's some sort of collaboration going on there. They bought each other. There's some deal, but they work together. Interesting. So, a few guys, uh, just make sure you're thoroughly dry there so you get your eyes ready. So, yeah. That, that <sighs> next layer. Just a little bit dry. All right. Now, I am going to take this brush, dry, 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 dry this brush, and I'm going to get a little bit of my gray on it, and I'm going to come over to my yellow and white. See how I did? Yeah. But I want it to be pretty dark. And guess what we're going to do? Come dry brush just a little reflection of fur. Oh, it's such a hint. Just Can a you guys bit. barely see it? Yeah. It's a barely there. Look at that. Barely there. Just 
Just barely there. Now let's get into our eyes. So we've got our barely there reflection. I might hit it with another little highlight when it's dry. I'm going to get my white over again to my blue gray, which was the ultramarine blue in the Mars black. I'm loading on the tip. You can see I'm swirling around. I also like to twirl my brush and then come back and load on the tip. Do you see how I did that? Swirl, swirl, swirl. Uh -huh. Twirl, load back on the tip. And make a little line right across that eye there. And then he's got a little friend on the inside here. See how that is? Yeah. It's not bad. Once I have that blue gray, I'm going to come in and get the smallest amount of white. And then I'm going to put my glasses on so I don't put it anywhere I'm not <laughs> supposed to. I'm going to come back and tap in a little white into that inner reflection. Isn't that wild? And then I can come here and tap a little bit of white, on, like wet, on the outside of that eye. And a little bit on the inside here. See how we did? Yeah. He's so cute. He's so cute. Much like my birds, he's... <laughs> so if you want them to look surprised, you want the eyes to be rounder, the more you lower the lid, the more disgruntled your cat will be. I have a tendency to disgruntle everything. <laughs> okay. I have added a little bit of my gray to that earlier yellow-orange mix that I did here. And I'm just making sure that there's just a bit more. Shine. You see that a little shine? You can always come back yeah. with black. And if you've got to come back in and kind of uneven it, see how you can do? So you're not stuck anywhere. You can manage it. All right. Um, when are they going to make blow dryers, especially for acrylic painting, says Rita. Oh, and thank you. Uh, thank you, Kelly Bernard. Uh, I'm so glad you love the tutorial and the group and you're part of it. So thank you for making it a great place to be. Um, I believe that there are blowers that don't have a heat setting or have control over the heat setting. Like, um, you know how there's hair dryers that have a very cool setting? That's more than enough. Heat guns I worry about um, just because they can get to a temperature that causes off-gassing in acrylic. It's formaldehyde for the most part. Formal I said that was such a weird accent. It's formaldehyde for the most part. Um, but, you know, it can build up. I worry about people uh, when they're doing um, a lot of pores and they're using heat as a component of that. Uh, that there could be uh, cumulative effects over time. I would definitely, you know, ask your doctor. I'm not a doctor. All right, guys. We nailed it. So, I think I promised everybody at the very least um, a post lesson. Do we do it as, I, we should just do it as a lesson. I'll make a specific short where I've got an actual plan for you guys. I'll do this here as your bonus. Yeah, let's do some twinkle stars for y'all. So I'm going to take my yellow and white on my number one monogram liner. Oh, did you get the the picture? I should get the picture too. Let's both get the picture. Let's both get the picture. We got picture in picture. <laughs> I'm going to just try to get some type of picture so that I have it no, for got later. Picture in picture. And then, you know, and then we do the other thing. And it's like, oh, were you live? Did you want to talk to anyone? Just go back. Why won't you go back? It won't go back. Go back. Go back with chat. There it is. All right. So I've got my yellow white. Maybe a little more yellow white. And uh, I can put one up here. We're just putting some, you could splatter too, but I feel like on a painting like this, at this point, I would want control over what's going on. You know? Now I can take a little bit of an upward stroke. Oh boy, I'm about to put my glasses back on. If you have trouble with lines, you can always uh, use a fluid paint. 
Uh, you can use a ruler or tape, a bridge, anything to help you get. Okay, I'm going to trim that down a little bit with a little burnt gray. All right, so that's just me making my little background color again. I'm fixing my line. All right. And then I can get a little white on my brush and heat up the center of that. What do you guys think? I think that was pretty fantastic. <laughs> Maggie H says, I learned when someone trolls, they j j uh, I just reply, have a blessed day, and they will always go away. That That is that is often true. Sometimes that brings out a weird rage in people. Yeah. <laughs> just just like i take it even when i know someone doesn't mean it mm -hmm. when they're like bless your heart but what I, I know what they really mean is not that i just like thank you because i'll i'll take a blessing all blessings right you yeah. wish me well even if you don't mean it i'll take it how do you guys like that little I star there it. does that work well uh celtic peasants is i'm only one hood still and uh, i'm gonna try so definitely go for that if if you're really like if you're like oh, i'm really one hoot you could wait for the mini book um the other thing is is remember i have a lot of one hoot like many 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 one hoot uh halloween painting lessons like this one is kind of like a two hoot and then we're going to do some like really involved stuff because you know last year we just kind of came in all one hoot um and and so i was like asked this year to like bring it a little bit and i was like i can bring it we're ready for it mm -hmm. but know that you have the support no matter where you are even if you paint above your supposed hoot level, which is this an arbitrary guidance that I'm trying to give you guys to go, if you see one hoot, not too many weird brushes, not too many weird color mixes, probably not more than an hour, mm. right? Two hoot, maybe a weird brush, a little more color mixing, somewhere between an hour and two hours. Over two hours, it's a three hoot, just because everybody gets tired. Even if the techniques haven't gotten significantly more complicated, it's just exhausting to be there that long. Yeah. Right. So the hoots are just a way for you guys to go, oh, like this video is going to be about this long. And, you know, and that's the other reason why the timestamps, because you guys know after we do this, we timestamp it. It comes out chapter mark. You can find your spot again. And that matches the written out instructions we give you guys. Oh, thank you, Celtic peasant. I appreciate that so much. Angela Maxwell says, you rock cinnamon and John going to paint this for my sister for Halloween for her Halloween birthday. And then Amy's like, you know, I'm grateful for this little bonus because I miss our paint chat times. I miss our paint chat times. Yeah. I do too. too. I miss our paint chat times. We're going to be doing one in Patreon. I'm going to do a tree. So I got the tree and the bear to do, which I'm so excited to share with you guys. Okay. Tuesday. No, this is Tuesday. Thursday. Same bat time, same bat channel here. We're going to paint a bat. Yes. Is cute bat. Kind of a cat bat. It's really cute. You know, it's my soot balls. You guys have dealt with my soot balls for years. <laughs> my soot ball bats. It's one of the fluffy ones. It actually may be a little easier than this one because just the background and the trees. But we'll right. see when we get into the wings. Um, they're all going to be about here. And they're all going to be gorgeous. And they're all going to go together. And I cannot wait to show them all to you. <sighs> now, this I mean seriously. Especially the way the world is right now. Gosh, be good to yourself. Just be kind. Make a little bit of time every day and just be kind to you. Be good to each other because that's what makes the world feel like it does. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.